Sonasa Software have those reasons because there are tailwinds to that for sure. It's betting big on its alliance with Microsoft. The company expects to get 50% of its long-term contracts from the tech giant and grow in Europe as well. Another possible tailwind would be the weaker currency. But by how much? That's the question, right? Let's ask Prasanna Oak. He's the CFO at Sonata Software. He joins us right now on the show. Prasanna, good having you. Thanks so much for joining in. Um, let me first get the... Uh, Thank, you. Thank you for having me. No, pleasure. Pleasure having you. Let me just get the bread and butter question out of the way. Can you uh, kind of simplify it for us? Uh, this rupee depreciation uh, for a company of your size, how much of a tailwind does it provide? Because... People are uh, constantly at loggerheads. Some people say IT companies hedge very efficiently and therefore neither the appreciation nor depreciation will hurt or benefit disproportionately. There are others who are saying there is a natural tailwind with the currency at 70. Can you simplify it for us? Yeah, sure, Neeraj. Uh, thanks so much. So uh, basically, our, uh, the forward covers that any IT company takes or Sonata will take is uh, largely a defensive measure uh, to ensure that you don't have uh, much of the forex impacts. Uh, having said that, uh, you know, as most companies do, we uh, we take a forward cover for uh, four quarters ahead. Uh, now, what happens with that is that as the rupee depreciates, uh, you do tend to gain benefits in terms of uh, in terms of the revenues, which you know, if, if your functional currency is a rupee. Having said that, uh, you've also taken forward covers, and so there could be a negative on account of that. Uh, so overall, it's a defensive measure. Uh, but uh, when the rupee starts to depreciate the way it has, uh, the net effect uh, could be positive on the bottom line. Uh, having said that, uh, the only other thing what one needs to take into consideration is the kind of forward covers that you've taken uh, already. Uh, so in the case of Sonata, we don't see any much large impact of uh, the rupee depreciation, at least for the first half of the year. Uh, post that, if the rupee continues at this level, we could definitely see a, a benefit. But uh, because we have got the forward covers locked in, uh, we don't expect to see much benefit at this point of time. Uh, it could be small, uh, you know, when the rupee starts to depreciate, it could be about 30 pips or so uh, is a benefit that could happen. But, but that is on uh, Q3 onwards. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Anyway. Thanks for putting this into perspective. Really appreciate that. Now, let's talk about how business is looking like. Your first quarter looked fairly impressive, both on the revenues and the EBIT front. Is this a sign of how the next few quarters would look like, Prasanna? Uh, yes, thanks. Yeah, in fact, uh, we have been uh, kind of having uh, uh, above industry average growth for the entire last year. We grew last year by about 18% in terms of dollars, uh, in, in terms of dollar revenues. Uh, so what uh, we as a company, we've got two lines of businesses. One is the international business and one is the domestic business. I think on both these fronts, uh, we've shown growth this time, 6% uh, on the top line uh, for, uh, for the international business. On the bottom line, if you look at it, both these businesses have grown up by about 5 to 7% respectively. Uh, we believe that uh, this is on account of the differentiated offerings that Sonata has. Uh, we've got our own proprietary technology called as platformation, uh, which we are using to, uh, you know, have a digital transformation in our uh, clients, in our verticals of choice, uh, which are retail, distribution, travel, and ISV segment. Uh, so as we continue to move forward this message, uh, we are finding a significant traction with the clients. We're having very interesting conversations. We added about eight new clients uh, in the last quarter. Uh, four of them coming in from Europe, two from US, and two from Asia. Uh, so overall, we are seeing far more interesting conversations, far more discussions with the clients, uh, which we believe uh, will help us in, in the top line. Uh, and uh, you know, therefore, obviously, the results uh, would be good. Uh, we don't, as a matter of fact, give forecast, but uh, we believe that we, uh, if we execute on this strategy, we should be having industry beating growth. And that could last for the next few years. I'm just trying to get a sense of whether <clears throat> the pipeline and the conversations give you confidence that what you've done in FY18, what you could do in FY19, could well have tailwinds for you to continue doing that for the next three or four years and not just uh, till FY19. Oh, sure, Neeraj. You know, because I, in fact, uh, if you look at platformation, uh, the approach that we are taking towards platformation, or the digital transformation of a client. Now, this is a long-term strategy. It is, it is driven by the C-suite of the companies or our customers. And there needs to be an engagement and, uh, and a purpose 
uh, and, and a long-term plan. So once you embark on that kind of a journey, uh, you know, it, it, it is is definitely not short term. It is definitely not one or two quarters. But if the strategy is executed well, uh, if we get these kind of customers in case the discussions go on, uh, we start real transformation. Uh, we believe that these will be long term customers, the key customers, and uh, we need to execute this to be able to have this kind of performance. Mm. Uh, Prasanna, this, uh, I mean, as I understand, 50% of your long-term enterprise accounts are expected to come from the Microsoft Alliance accounts. Would these be pivots in you uh, reaching these strong growth numbers? And part two of my question, therefore, would be that because you've got a large global player as your as your partner of sorts, would this mean slightly lower margins? than what you otherwise would have gotten. It's great great to get growth. Please don't uh, misunderstand my question. I'm just trying to get a sense of whether it comes at a small cost, which I believe companies have to uh, take at some point of time. Uh, no, I, I, mean, it is, I don't think there's a question of you know smaller uh, uh, margins or anything on that front. See, our relationship uh, with, uh, you know, uh, in the space of uh, implementing solutions on Microsoft Dynamics, or we involved in the Azure space, uh, uh, we involved in the analytics space. So we have got offerings uh, in the Microsoft uh, stack uh, across our verticals of choice, which includes, you know, uh, uh, which includes uh, distribution, retail. Uh, a lot of our uh, IPs, we've got about six IPs, are all on uh, Azure. Uh, so there is definitely a strong binding with Microsoft. Having said that. Uh, we believe that this this partnership, our, our focus on Microsoft technologies, uh, whether it be Dynamics on the CRM space, on the data analytics space, on the Azure, uh, will help. Uh, it's a niche, it's a competency that we have got. Uh, we've executed significant projects on this in the retail space. Uh, so, so we believe that there is enough headroom uh, for us to be able to maintain the growth. We also have an excellent relationship as one of the larger resellers of the Microsoft products and the platforms in India itself, uh, which is our domestic part of the business. Uh, so, so yes, it is certainly an advantage for us. At the same time, as you mentioned, you know, we don't think it's a disadvantage. Uh, it's a growing field. Uh, there's a lot of need for it. And, and again, as we said, you know, we, we need to execute our strategy better. Okay. Uh, now, I know you mentioned you don't give guidance, and I won't press you for that, uh, but I, I get a sense of what you would do in the year on the basis of what you said thus far. I just have one final question, and please correct me if I'm wrong here, but as I look at your EBIT margins within India, outside India, there's a significant difference. And I think the, the, from an investor's perspective, uh, for an IT company, one of the key things that they expect the company to do at some point of time is move to the next leg of the operational metrics. Now. You clearly shown that by the outside India EBIT margin performance that you've displayed quarter after quarter now every quarter. Um, what's the what's the uptick, consolidated uptick that you foresee on your operational metrics three years out? Uh, because I would presume that your international revenues as a pie of your overall revenues pro would probably only go up over the course of the next three years. So how does that impact the margin profile? Sure, Neeraj. I mean, it's, it's a great question, you know, trying to look out uh, three years out. Uh, so, you know, if you look at this uh, India component of the business, these margins traditionally have been uh, lower and, uh, you know, they are a, a component of the revenue. So we actually measure ourselves in the margins, on in terms of the margins for the domestic business, and that we measure it in absolute terms. Uh, so we have shown a quarter-on-quarter -quarter increase in these margins also. Now, if you look at the platformation concept, even on the domestic clients, even on the India clients, there are value-added services that we are providing. Uh, it, it goes and spans a range of security. It, uh, it uh, manages licenses. It will manage implementations. It will be sale of our IPs within India. Now, all these kind of products and offerings uh, that we are uh, selling in India uh, would, have an, uh, would have larger margins than what just pure reselling is. Uh, it includes, uh, you know, moving uh, customers and clients uh, to the cloud. Uh, all these components have larger margins, and so therefore, in in absolute terms, uh, we could see three years down the line uh, uh, uptake, significant uptake in the domestic business also. Now, as you consider both these businesses, overall, obviously, 
Uh, we would like the uptick to be there, still too far out, uh, but we got a strategy in place, uh, we got a plan of action in place, we are talking to the clients, and uh, and so yes, uh, that's that's where aspirationally we will expect to be three years on the line. We will wait to play it out. But you won't yes. be able to give me a sense of what the number could look like. Ballpark is. Uh, that would be very very tough. I mean, today on our domestic front, we are roughly at about twenty six percent margin. Uh, you know, uh, a bit margin on a domestic business, it is varying between three to five percent. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that as you go ahead. And, and you have uh, the value added services even on a domestic front of the business, uh, that 3 to 5 percent could start to go up. Obviously, we need to execute it, and then when you blend it all together, it could increase. But uh, at this point of time, uh, no, uh, Neeraj, unfortunately, I will not be able to guide, or, or even if I give a guidance, would not be the correct uh, picture at this point of time.